Sutra. Then the world honored one upon the lion's throne emitted simultaneously from his five extremities a precious light which shone far throughout the ten directions to annoy the crowds of as many first come ones and Dharma Prince Bodhisattvas as their most of dust. Commentary Then the world honored one upon the lion's throne emitted simultaneously from his five extremities a precious light. Sitting on the lion's throne, Shakyamuni Buddha emitted light from his two hands, his two feet, and the top of his head. All at the same time, the light shone far throughout the ten directions to annoy the crowds of as many first come ones and Dharma Prince Bodhisattvas as they are most of dust. Shakyamuni Buddha anointed the crowds of the first come ones as a representation that his Dharma is the highest, the summit. The way of all Buddhas is the same. The first come ones of the ten directions also proclaim this summit Dharma, just as Shakyamuni Buddha is doing now. The way of all Buddhas is the same. It is mutually interpenetrating. Sutra. All those first come ones also emitted from their five extremities precious lines, which were as numerous as most of dust and which came from the various directions to annoy the crown of the Buddha as well as the crowns of all the great Bodhisattvas and Arhats in the assembly. Commentary All those dust come once as numerous as the fine most of dust throughout the ten directions, also emitted from their five extremities precious lines, which were as numerous as most of dust and which came from the various directions. Precious light also issued forth from their two hands, two feet, and from the tops of their heads, light just like that which Shakyamuni Buddha had emitted. The light came to anoint the crown of the Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha, as well as the crowns of all the great Bodhisattvas and our hearts in the assembly. Sutra, groves, trees, pools, and ponds, all proclaimed the sound of Dharma. The lines blended and crisscrossed like a jeweled silk net. It was an unprecedented, unprecedented event for everyone in the Great Assembly, and they all attained the Vira Samadhi. Commentary Groves, trees, ponds, and ponds all proclaimed the sound of Dharma. The flowing water, the breath of wind, and the rustle, rustle of the trees all expressed the drama. The lines blended and crisscrossed like a jeweled silken net. The lines of the Buddhas of the ten directions anointed Shakyamuni Buddha's crown, and Shakyamuni Buddha's light anointed the first commons in the ten directions, as numerous as most of dust. The lines pattern appeared to create a magnificent net. It was an unprecedented event for everyone in the Great Assembly, and they all attained the Vira Samadhi. They had never before seen such auspicious portents, and everyone there obtained the Vira Samadhi. Sutra. Then the heavens rained down hundreds of precious lotus flowers of very gated combinations of green, yellow, red, and white. All the space in the ten directions turned the colors of the seven gems. Commentary Then, when everyone in the Great Assembly attained the Vara Samadhi, the heavens rained down hundreds of precious lotus flowers of variegated combinations of green, yellow, red, and white. These four colors appeared in various combinations on the petals of the lotus flowers. Some green lotuses were accented with touches of yellow. Some yellow lotuses had red dots on them. Some white lotuses were flecked with red. All the space in the ten directions turned the colors of the seven gems. The seven gems are gold, silver, lapis lazuli, crystal, mother of pearl, red pearl, and carnelian. All the ones turned these colors. Sutra, 
This Sahara world with its mountains, rivers, and great earth disappeared totally, and all that could be seen were lands as numerous as most of dust coming together as one realm. People praises in songs and trance spontaneously, pervaded in celebration. Commentary This Sahara world with its mountains, rivers, and great earth disappeared totally, and all that could be seen were lands as numerous as most of dust, coming together as one realm. Our world is called the Sahara world. The name is able to be endured, representing that living beings are able to bear the suffering and distress of this world. Actually, it's unbearable, but beings go right on bearing it, not admitting the suffering. They take suffering to be bliss. They think it's fine here. At this point, however, the Saha wound disappeared. That was due to the transforming power of spiritual penetrations, which Shakyamuni Buddha used in that assembly. The Buddha lands as numerous as grains of sand multiplied by grains of sand united. They had been distinct and individual. But now they came together as one. Pure phrases in songs and trance spontaneously pervaded in celebration. Pure and clear sounds of music were heard everywhere. Before this, the groves and trees, the ponds and pools had expressed the drama, but in this place, everything proclaimed the drama sound in subtle songs and trance. The water flows, the wind blows, proclaiming the Mayana. In pools of seven jewels of aloteses, of four colors and waves of solid gold. Manju Sri selects the organ of entry, Volume 5, Chapter 3. Sutra. Then the first common said to Dharma Prince Manju Sri, You should now contemplate these 25 great bodhisattvas and ahas who are beyond learning. H has explained the initial expedient in his accomplishment of the way. All that they have cultivated the true to true and actual perfect penetration. Their cultivation is equal without distinctions of superior and inferior or earlier and later. Commentary Then the third command Shakyamuni said to Dharma Prince Manjushri, you should now contemplate these 25 great bodhisattvas and ahas who are beyond learning. Take a look now, reflect on the Dharma door which each of these 25 sages used. Beyond learning refers to those who have been certified to fourth stage ahatship or above. Each has explained the initial expedient in his accomplishment of the way. All say they have cultivated to true and actual perfect penetration. They attained genuine perfect penetration of the sense organs. Their cultivation is equal without distinctions of superior and inferior, or earlier or later. In fact, there is no way to distinguish them as better or worse, excellent or deficient, or more or less advanced. Sutra, I now wish to cause Ananda to become enlightened. And so I ask which of these 25 practices is appropriate to his faculties and which will be, after my extinction, the easiest expedient door for living beings of this realm to enter in order to accomplish the Bodhisattva vehicle and seek the unsurpassed way. Commentary Shakyamuni Buddha says, I now wish to cause Ananda to become enlightened. Ananda is still a first stage ahat. I'd like him to become enlightened and attain the second, third, and or fourth fruition of ahatship. And so I ask which of these 25 practices is appropriate to his faculties? Which one is right for someone with Ananda's abilities? There are 18 realms and 7 elements, which Dharma door is most appropriate for Ananda, and which will be, after my extinction, the easiest expedient door for living beings of this realm to enter in order to accomplish the Bodhisattva Vihaiko and seek the unsurpassed way. The living beings referred to here are us. 
We are at the Buddhist lecture. Hearing this Dharma are just the ones he means. You who read this sutra now are also included. So don't set yourself apart and say, I'm not included. You just mess yourself up that way. If you put yourself outside, you will fall in the future. And if you become a horse, cow, dog, chicken, or pig, it won't be easy to get to listen to the Suragama Sutra. For one thing, you'd never make it up the four flights of stairs to the lecture hall in Hong Kong. Ducks came to listen to my sutra lectures, but that was on the ground floor. Long ago, Shakyamuni Buddha arranged our seats in this Dhamma assembly that is now taking place. Don't take yourself too lightly. Of course, if you don't come to listen now, you won't have a share. Which of these Dhamma doors will be found most expedient by living beings of the future who have great faculties and who, in every thought, seek the unsurpassed way? The Buddha asks Manjushri Bodhisattva, which Dhamma door will most easily bring success? Manjushri Bodhisattva said, Your mind to eat and select one. Sutra Dhamma Prince Manjushri, receiving the Buddha's compassionate instruction, arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and basing himself on the Buddha's awesome spirit, spoke verses to the Buddha. Commentary Dharma Prince Manjushri, receiving the Buddha's compassionate instruction, arose from his seat. Wonderfully lucky Bodhisattva was directed by the Buddha to select from any of the eighteen realms and seven elements a method of attaining perfect penetration. He was to find the one most appropriate for another and for us to cultivate the six sense organs, the six sense objects, and the six consciousnesses make up the eighteen realms. Earth, wind, fire, and water, along with emptiness, consciousness, and perception, are the seven elements, as was explained in detail previously. Receiving this compassionate instruction from the Buddha, Manjushri Bodhisattva arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and basing himself on the Buddha's awesome spirit, spoke verses to the Buddha. The Bodhisattvas and Ahasa all have places to sit around the Buddha, unlike Firehead Vara, who must stand in the assembly. Verses can vary in number of feet and lines, but they all contain the principles of the Sutra. Sutra, the sea of enlightenment in nature, is perfect and clear. Complete distinct body is a miraculous source. But when basic brightness shone so that objects appeared with the object's existence, the nature's brilliance ceased. Commentary The sea of enlightenment in nature is perfect and clear. The sea of enlightenment is boundless, containing within it all the mountains, rivers, and great earth, the vegetation and myriad appearances. The nature of the sea of enlightenment is both clean and perfect. Complete distinct body is a miraculous source. The clarity of perfection of the sea of enlightenment is fundamentally subtle and wonderful, but within this subtlety of a single truth, falseness arises, and the light reveals the reveals the arising of objects. But when basic brightness shone so that objects appeared with the object's existence, the nature's brilliance ceased. Basically, the sea of enlightenment contains everything within it. There is nothing which is not in the nature of the treasury of the first come one. But as soon as there is a single ignorant thought, a falseness arises. Once there is falseness, there are objects defining appearances. Because of this falseness, the inherent light of the enlightened nature does not shine forth just as when the sky is covered by clouds. Sutra, confusion and falseness bring about emptiness. Relying on emptiness, time and space take form. Thoughts settle, making countries and lands. What knows and feels becomes living beings. Commentary, confusion and falseness bring about emptiness. Because of falseness, subject and object come into being. 
basically both the aspects are false. In the substance of the sea of enlightenment, not a single drama stands. There isn't anything at all, but the staring produces the appearance of fatigue. After a sustained period of time, protraction brings about fatigue, and then a falseness and confusion give rise to emptiness. In the sea of enlightenment, there isn't anything, not even emptiness. The verse says below, The emptiness created within enlightenment is like a single bubble in all the sea. How insignificant that is, and yet we think of emptiness as being so vast. Relying on emptiness, time and space take form. The ten directions and three periods of time come into being. Thus settle, making countries and lands. Once time and space arise out of emptiness, then false thinking becomes solid, making the lands. What knows and feels becomes living beings. Knowledge and sensations turn into living creatures. Sutra, the emptiness created within great enlightenment, is like a single bubble in all the sea. Lands like fine dust molds subject to our flows. All come forth out of empty space, just as the bubble bursts, space is no longer there. How much the less the three states of being? Commentary The first lines of the verse said, The sea of enlightenment in nature is perfect and clear, complete. Distinct body is a miraculous source. The perfection of the pure source of body is extremely wonderful. Now the verse speaks of the emptiness created within great enlightenment. We all are aware of the existence of emptiness. But do we know where it came from? I believe no one knows. That's because emptiness is so vast. It's impossible to know the limits of empty space or its thoughts. Who is the, the mother of emptiness? No one knows. But now the Suragama Sutra points to the source. Emptiness is born from the nature of great enlightenment, and yet, within that expanse, it is extremely minute. How big is it? It is like a single bubble in all the sea, like a little flake of foam in the ocean. Lands like fine dust moss, sub subject to our flows, all come forth out of empty space. There are three categories of our flows. Our flows of desire, our flows of existence, and our flows of ignorance. Myra lands which have our flows all come out of emptiness. The emptiness came out of enlightenment. And the lens came out of emptiness, just as the bubble burst, space is no longer there. In the same way that a bubble pops on the ocean, the emptiness disappears in the great enlightenment. How much the less the three states of being? Sutra, returning to the source, the nature is not two. Many are the entrances through expedience. None of them does the search the nature fail to go through. Compliant or adverse, all is expedient. First, resolve and answering somebody. Come slow or fast as there are different norms. Commentary In his verse, Manjushri Bodhisattva says that emptiness is like a bubble in the sea of enlightenment, and that countries and lands within the emptiness are also extremely minute. If emptiness disappears, all the countries and lands, the mountains, rivers, and the great earth, and the sentient and material worlds all disappear as well. When one cultivates this Dharma door, returning to the source, the nature is not to. Returning to the source means accomplishing Buddhahood. There is only one place to return to, and that is your original home. This world we people live in is not really our home. I have a home to protest, but that house is not your genuine home. To become a Buddha is to find your genuine home. Before you become a Buddha, you are a vagabond. Moving from hotel to hotel, you are always on the move. Many are the entrances through expedience. Being expedient means being unattached. For example, once there was a child crawling toward a well, which was flush to the ground. If the child had continued, it would have fallen into the well. 
the Buddha saw this, but he knew that if he called the child back, it would not have listened, but would have continued to crawl forward. So he made a fist with one hand, held it out, and called, Child, come back. I have candy in my hand for you. I have candy. Do you like candy? When the child heard there was candy, it turned around and came back. There was no candy in the Buddha's hand after all. But was the Buddha lying? No. That is an example of an expedient method. He used his empty fist to save the child because there was no other method that would have worked at that point. The jaws of experience are uncountable. In general, whatever method will save a person is the dumber door you use. None of them does the sexually nature fail to go through compliant or adverse or is expedient. When you are certified to the dumber nature of a sage, there is nothing you cannot understand. What is compliant is expedient, and what is adverse is also expedient. Whatever complies with your abilities and circumstances, you can use in your cultivation. What is adverse not in accord with your situation can still be applied to your cultivation. Both the compliant situations and adverse ones in which you cultivate are the expedient dharma doors. First, resolve and entering samadhi. Come slow or faster as there are different norms. Some cultivate more quickly, some more slowly, so they can't all be lumped together. Sutra, form and thought combined become the dust. Their essence is not discernible. How can one use that what lacks clarity and expect to gain perfect penetration? Commentary, form is created from false thinking. Form and thought combined become the dust, the defining objects of form. Their essence is not discernible. It is not clear and comprehensible. How can one use what lacks clarity and expect to gain perfect penetration? Can you expect to attain the Dharma door of perfect penetration with a method that is neither clear nor ultimate, that is impossible? The verse goes on to say that using the sense object a form to cultivate perfect penetration is not the best method. Some people are able to be certified to the fruition through this method, but only because they have special conditions with that particular Dhamma door. It is not something that most people can cultivate.